Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. It is such a joy to meet you even through this episode. If you are watching us for the first time, a big warm welcome. God bless you for tuning in. I believe you will have a word from God today that will sort out issues in your life, right to the point of your need. And those of you who have been following us regularly, we appreciate you, we thank God for you, and I know that God has been building you up. Thank you for all your emails saying how God has spoken to you, ministered to your heart. And I believe today will be another such day. I want to talk to you about something that's so blessed. It's actually about wisdom. We all need wisdom. Uh, and wisdom is the way how God looks at something, how God wants you to do something. And that wisdom is so needed for our lives that we can walk in victory, walk in the way God wants us to walk. And today we're going to see how we can have the wisdom of God through the opening of spiritual eyes. Wisdom through the opening of spiritual eyes. Shall we go? One of the ways we receive wisdom, as we saw in the last episode, is through faith. We saw from the life of Moses' parents how they believed that God is above and beyond their circumstance, and He is able to be faithful to what He has said or revealed in His Word. And that's how Moses' mother had the wisdom to, to save him uh, by taking an ark and, uh, you know, making it, turning it into a bed with boat and putting in the river Nile. And we saw how this act of wisdom literally brought favor for Moses from Pharaoh's daughter. And eventually we see a success story unfolding there. He grows up to be the deliverer of three million Israelite slaves. Praise God. So that act of wisdom was propelled by faith. Now, wisdom, another step in wisdom, it is propelled through the opening of spiritual eyes. Now, we're going to get into Exodus 15 and learn about this because no matter whatever your crisis may be, you know, the crisis may be in the family peace or health, or it's a business situation, it's a professional situation, financial hardship, whatever it is, the wisdom of God is the answer. It's the solution for the way out. So let's get into Exodus 15 verses 22. I'm going to read to verse 25. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So here is the situation. The Israelites are in the wilderness after Red Sea. No water for three days. Now, three days without water is not a joke. It is a crisis indeed. It is a situation kind of out of human control, out of human ability. Verse 23, Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them. So when they were without water, they get to see a pool of water. 
Look at how excited they would have been, if you can picture it in your mind. And they run and they just fall and, and, and drink that water. And the scripture says, it was bitter. Now, bitter is a very harsh word. Another uh, version puts it brackish. To my understanding, uh, it was waters that when they drank of it, they became sick. And the reason I say that is because God reveals himself as, I am the Lord that healeth thee, Jehovah Rapha, in verse 26. I am the Lord that healeth thee, in verse 26. And that's because of, they were sick, made sick by this brackish water. And God revealed his healing and healed the people. There need not be that revelation of a healer if they were not sick at that time. So the scripture, we need to allow the scripture reveal itself to us. Yes, they became sick. So the waters were so, you know, such sickly waters. And there are two responses to a crisis, which we see here. The children of Israel, their response to the crisis was, they complained, which was their usual response from the beginning. They were complainers, grumblers, murmurers, you know. They spoke negatively, they gossiped. So this was their attitude. When you face a crisis, usually a crisis can bring about two kind of responses. You know, it's, about, it's up to you of what response you want to choose in that situation. The children of Israel responded in their carnal mind. The children of Israel responded in a way that their flesh was glorified in that situation. Meaning, you know, they said, what shall we drink? That's what it says. Meaning, you brought us uh, this far, Moses, and, uh, you know, we are without water, and now the water we found is like this. Why did you get us here? Why did God put us in such a situation? You know, they were taking themselves too serious, not realizing that Moses also was in a situation, not realizing that God himself was there in their midst as the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. And, and because of God, they're not going to be forsaken. God, who has brought them this far, will also sort out this situation. Uh, they did not think about that. Rather, they said, come on, give us an answer. Give us a solution. We can't drink this. And who do you think you are? And, you know, we are, uh, we are people who have just followed your advice, followed you, and now you brought us to a dead end. Now, that kind of an attitude is carnal mind. The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity to God. We read that in Romans chapter 8. And we have to be very careful that when we are facing a crisis, we should not let the carnal mind take over us. Romans 8 we read in verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is enmity against God. Verse 8, So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh cannot please please God, meaning they can't receive anything from God. Uh, 
They cannot receive the wisdom to deal with the crisis. You know, complaining, grumbling, backbiting, gossiping, murmuring will never put you in a place where you can receive the wisdom of God. Remember, it takes one idea from God to turn your circumstance all around, you know, and, and give you the breakthrough. But you need to keep the pipeline unclogged. That means you can't let the carnal mind, you can't take yourself too serious. You, you can't, you know, allow flesh to take over and, 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 and feel the way the Israelites felt. You know, they, they felt they are on the top and God had to, you know, they forgot that they were slaves in Egypt and it was God's faithfulness to their fathers and his mercies and his power that has brought them, uh, that, that has brought them thus far. So be careful. Uh, this is something that we, you know, come across when we are faced with a crisis, you know, the devil can try to bring in thoughts like, you know, you you trusted in God. Why should you have this problem? Uh, you believed in, in his word. Why should you have this challenge? You tried to do this for God, that for God. Why should you face this pain, this hardship? Now, that's the time I always uh, tell something, switch off your mind. I'm in your carnal mind. Don't let your mind think too much. Don't overthink. Let me repeat it again. Don't overthink. Don't take yourself too serious. God is still with you. God has not forgotten you. God has not forsaken you. God has brought you this far. But this situation might seem to be so tight. That doesn't mean you're going to sink. That doesn't mean God has left you. One wisdom piece from God can turn it around. But for that to happen, you need to see with the eyes of the Spirit. So when all these people did these things, here is Moses doing another thing. He cried out to the Lord. Now, that simply means that rather trusting on his own goodness or rather, you know, feeling, taking himself too serious. You know, he didn't fight with God. You know, he didn't say, God, uh, I trusted you. Why you put me in this situation? You know, these people are talking against me, you know. No, Moses did not say that. He just cried to the Lord, meaning... He went through brokenness, brokenness. He didn't want to complain. He didn't want to murmur. He didn't want to grumble. He didn't want to revile in return. He didn't speak just um, words that he did not mean. Rather, the word cried out to the Lord just means he was so broken. You know, he said, God, I cannot solve this issue. My flesh is too weak. I cannot be the answer. I cannot find the answer. The answer is not in my own strength. Lord, it's not about me. It's not about me being a great leader and being put into a situation like this to face it all. No, it's not about me, Lord. I can't do anything in my strength, in my wisdom, in my knowledge, in my experience, in my expertise. Praise God. I love that. You know, if you want God to open your spiritual eyes, this is key number one. Give room to brokenness. Be broken before the Lord. Now, the meaning of the word brokenness is, is just to be humble to submit, to say, Lord, I surrender. It's not in my strength. It's not in, in me. I don't have the answer. I'm just looking up to you. Only you can do that. And you brought us this far. 
please take us henceforth. Show yourself up in the situation. Ain't that amazing? Praise God. So, so he cried out to the Lord, verse 25, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made, st made sweet. Amen. Amen. You go to the place of brokenness and God opens your spiritual eyes. Now, there should have been a number of trees around that pool. You know, we can imagine because there was water. There should have been a number of trees. But God zeroes his attention to one tree. In fact, in fact, he had a vision, his spiritual eyes open, and he just saw one tree. So God showing him a tree is actually opening of his spiritual eyes. The tree was there even before. Moses would have seen it or might have seen it even before. But now he is seeing the same tree a different way. Now he is able to see a solution that can come out of this tree. The amazing thing is, here were the waters which were sickening people as they drank of it. And the solution for that crisis was right next to that sickening waters. Praise God. You know, I want to tell you, the solution for your crisis is not so far. It's not at the other end of the globe. It is so close to you, so near you. It may be even just on, on the right side of you, on the left side of you, just behind you, just before you. But it's, it's so important that you need your spiritual eyes to be opened to see the solution for your crisis. Now, one of the ways we have our spiritual eyes opened, as I said, is through brokenness. You know, the psalmist says that the Lord desires in a broken and a contrite heart. We read that in Psalm 51. It is a psalm of confession after David had sinned against Bathsheba and the prophet had brought a word of, you know, just chastening and chastisement to David. But then in verse 6, Psalm 51, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. So, so God brings wisdom from our spirit, provided our flesh is broken. Meaning, it's, it's not about you getting sick or something like that. It's about uh, that self-strength to be submitted before God. It's about coming to God and totally yielding yourself, totally surrendering yourself totally humbling yourself. And that will result in opening of the eyes. I mean the spiritual eyes where you will have wisdom. You can see the solution for your crisis. Another incident is seen in Genesis chapter 21, verse 19, where Hagar is sent away with her son Ishmael. And the water in her bottle runs dry. She doesn't want to see the death of Ishmael, her son. Puts him under a shrub and she runs and, and sits down uh, in another place. And the scripture says, you know, the angel of God calls to Hagar out of heaven. That's in verse 17. Because God heard the voice of the lad. Now, the result of that angelic visitation is given in verse 19. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Now, it doesn't say that uh, God opened a well of water. The water was still there, but she did not or she could not see that before. But God opened her eyes, a spiritual eyes 
which resulted in the physical eyes being open, being directed to a place where there was water. And Ishmael was given that water and he lived. So brokenness opens our spiritual eyes. Another thing that opens our spiritual eyes is prayer, you know, seeking God. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that you know us not. So calling on God in prayer, meaning, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. You know, that needs to be our prayer every single day. Before we got saved, the Bible says that the God of this world, Satan, had blinded our spiritual eyes. But when the true light, which is Jesus Christ, he came into our lives, he has opened our spiritual eyes. So when I say, ask God to open your spiritual eyes, what I don't mean is, I don't mean that you're blind spiritually. When Christ has come into your heart, your spiritual eyes are open. What I mean is to enlighten the spiritual eyes, meaning, Asking God, Lord, let me be able to see what you're showing. Help me to see in the realm of the Spirit. Help me to see what you're showing to me concerning this situation. Now, we, we see in 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha the prophet was surrounded by the armies of Syria and they wanted to take him. They wanted to uh, catch hold of him and take him to the Syrian king. But Elisha was not afraid. When the morning came, the servant of Elisha came and he was able to see that the whole city was surrounded by chariots of the enemies and horses and he was afraid. And when he told Elisha about this dangerous situation, Elisha was very cool. He said in verse 16, 2 Kings 6, So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So he made a statement, you know, we have more armies than our enemies. Amazing. You know, the servant would have got perplexed, but immediately... Elisha does something. In verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Amen. Hallelujah. So Elisha prays, Lord, open the eyes of this young man. And then this young man could see, spiritual eyes were open. It was so powerful that he, he couldn't see through his physical eyes. And it was so real. He could see not just ordinary chariots and horses, but fiery chariots and fiery horses from heaven. Fear left. Fear left the young servant. So that was a result of asking God to open the spiritual eyes. You can ask Him. And like Elisha prayed, we can also, you can also ask people who have this grace to pray for you, who have this anointing to pray for you, and God is able to open your eyes. Now, you need not wait for someone to pray for you. You can actually Pray and ask God. God looks at your heart. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you. So that's a powerful word. And at that moment, when we see in the story of Moses, God showed him a tree. And when he cut that tree, cast it into the water, that was the act of wisdom that came through the opening of the spiritual eyes. 
one act of wisdom which was birthed to, through the opening of the spiritual eyes just changed that situation. Not only was bitterness removed, the waters were made sweet. The waters were not made neutral, it was not made tasteless, the water was made sweet. In other words, the water became healing water. So when they drank now, people who are sick, they were healed by the power of Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah, I'm just excited, I feel the anointing. So these are the two keys, you know, to have the wisdom that can get past your crisis. Number one, allow yourself to be broken before the Lord. Have brokenness, humble yourself, surrender before God, rather than, you know, asking questions or allowing the flesh. No, humble yourself, surrender before God. Secondly, ask God to open your spiritual eyes and it's worth, it's worth. You know, when you see God so sincerely, so with a full heart, Jeremiah 29, verse 12, if you seek me with a whole heart, you will find me. I shall be seen of you. So that's so important to seek him with a whole heart and asking him to open your eyes and God's going to open your eyes. Now let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. One act of wisdom turns around the situation. And Lord, you've spoken the keys to receive that piece of wisdom from you, heavenly wisdom. I pray may your wisdom flow into the hearts of your children. May the wisdom of God, which is Christ, in you the hope of glory. May the Christ release wells of wisdom in the hearts of your children, that they may know what to do to sort out their crisis, whether it's financial, whether it's health, whether it's family, and I speak a breakthrough. May the bitterness of Mara, that was turned into sweetness, the same kind of a breakthrough happen for your children, that whatever has been embittering their life, lose its power in Jesus' name, by your wisdom, may it be turned into a blessing, into a healing for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. May God bless you.